Hey there, and welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you stopping by today. Uh, I love to share tips and techniques like this, so I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share that with you. If you're old to the channel, you know what's about to come. I'm going to walk you through each step of the process of making a canopy fully painted. And this is a new technique to my channel. Uh, I learned this a couple of years ago from my late friend, John Morgan, and it's a tried and true method. And it's pretty simple, little bit labor intensive, but worth it for the amount of detail that you get out. Let's get started. All right, so the primary thing that we're gonna be working with for this is something called liquid masking or masking liquid H2O. You can purchase this off Amazon, have it shipped to your home, and it works really well. Now, a lot of people swear by putting it in a like a like an airbrush or something to get like an even coverage. I find that it works just as well for our application using a brush. So brushing on it makes it look really, really ugly. So this used to be clear. I'll insert a photo of the uh the picture that i've got of it drying but you apply this using a brush and you can accelerate the drying with like a hair dryer it's pretty straightforward not rocket science there the next couple tools that you're going to want involve a fine tip marker and a number 11 razor so fine tip marker obviously you have to mark out where you're going to put uh, the windows and such. So on the scale hell diver that I've got here, I've got some rough markings uh, around this former and then the framework for the sliding part of the canopy. All right, so that's what you use the marker for. Now you can use straight edge in terms of, of you can apply like masking tape to this. And as you pull the masking tape up, it's not going to pull that with it. Uh, I use a, um, a uh, Taylor's measurement tape. I've been using this sucker for years. You can pick one up at a craft store or a fabric store and I'll tape one end and then I'll tape the other and I use the edges of it. I've used this thing for so many models and doing panel lines and things. It's got marker stains all over it, but it works because it's semi-rigid but flexible enough to go over uh, the curves. So use that as a guide for making your marks. You can also tape one end and do the horizontal marks instead of using a ruler. However you want to do it, it works. Just get the lines on there using a fine tip marker. If you use a big marker, it's going to leave a little bit more of a mess for you to clean up, but it's not a terribly huge deal. You just want to make sure that you have the edges defined well. From there, the, the best way that I found to do removing any of this stuff is to just use a number 11 blade and go slow and cut all of your lines. Now you can, you can not cut where, so for example, here, you don't necessarily have to cut here on this line or there or there or there. You can just do the perimeter, but I found that once you put the paint on, you can't really see these shallow cuts. You don't have to go too heavy handed on this. This is 0 0.030 PETG plastic. Uh, it, it's it's gonna hold up fine. If you have thinner plastic, you may want to do a couple of light passes, but this stuff is kind of like a rubber. And you'll see what I mean when I go to peel it off. So then once you've got things cut, you can start peeling off. And that's when I recommend using this. this is like a guitar pick or if you have a screen removal tool for a phone that's what this is actually from but a guitar pick will work just as well maybe the edge of a credit card but this is a lot thinner and more pliable so i kind of like that so that i'm not getting too heavy-handed on the thinner canopy plastic and you use that to sort of peel and scrape things up and that's what you see here so you peel up the areas that you're going to paint. So I'm going to paint this, and this is going to be open. I'm going to paint this framework, right? So then we have all of that area masked off. So that is the bulk of the work. 
So I am going to set you guys up on a tripod and put you a little bit on a time lapse to have a look at what it's like to do this last aft portion of the canopy. All right, so just as a quick demonstration, I'm gonna start this run and you just sort of start it with the tip of the guitar pick piece of plastic. And then you can start stretching it away from the canopy. And the reason you wanna do multiple layers of the liquid masking is because it is pretty thin. Uh, by having a thicker application, it's much easier to manage when you remove it. And that's just it. And then once you get to the edges, especially where you butt up with another section of the canopy, or even up against the model where there might be some leftover residual canopy glue, it gets a little more problematic, and so you have to kind of chip away at it. And like I said, this is the bulk of the work of the whole process. Just making sure that it's down and that you have all of the critical areas masked off cleanly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the cutting and removing and come back to you when we're ready for the next step. All right, so we have all of our pieces of liquid masking removed. So the next thing we have to do is mask the airplane for painting. So I usually do this by doing masking tape around all the canopy places. And then I'm going to be using just some basic uh, protecting paper to mask off anywhere around the airplane. Now I'm going to be using a self etching rattle can to have something etch onto the plastic. You don't want to use like straight acrylic or latex paint, maybe an enamel, but I feel like even enamels are going to chip off of the plastic over time. You need something to chemically bond to the plastic. So use a primer or use a base coat of paint that is going to self etch itself onto the plastic. Most uh, like Krylon Fusion kinds of paints, those will do just fine. And that's what I'm gonna use. It's just a basic green to give me a base coat so that when you look through the canopy and you'll see the color green. And then I'll follow up with a paint uh, of the base blue over top of that. So I'm gonna get this masked up and shoot some green and we'll come back.
All right, so at this point, I've got all of the masking, the main tape masking removed from the painting process. And you can see that the paint is already mostly dried. It's a very thin coat because you don't need much. It's just for color and for etching. The main, uh, the main color application will be your final top coat. And you can apply a matte coat or whatever you want before you remove the final uh, liquid masking film. So I am gonna get out my brush since all of this is just brushed on. It's nothing fancy on this model. So I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty and get the blue paint painted on here. All right, so now that I've gone over everything at least once, we're coming back here and we've still got some wet spots. I can accelerate this with a little bit of a hair dryer, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start my second coat. All right, so I've got two coats down. Basically, there's not a whole lot left other than to do some basic touch-up of some of these smudges, like there and there, there. Just pay attention. If you need to use a little bit more heat, hair dryer, don't be afraid. Just don't get too hot and heavy-handed because then you can warp the plastic. And then once all the paint is on, Make sure you let it get a good cure out, okay? So you're gonna wanna let it harden up a bit. Even if you accelerate the drying, the paint is still gonna be a little bit soft. You want it to be a little bit hard. You don't wanna go too quick on this. Um, otherwise, it's it's not gonna look great. You're, you're gonna get dirty lines if, if, you, if you try to rush this too much. So be patient. Let the chemicals do their chemical thing. And from there, we'll pick back up. All right, so this is the end result. Looks a little ugly still, doesn't it? Well, now you're gonna go through and you're gonna go around these same areas with your number 11 blade and cut them again. You don't wanna just pull the liquid masking up because you're gonna end up pulling, well, ripping the edges of the paint. And that's what's gonna give those little jaggies. So make sure you take your time and just lightly score again with your number 11 blade. And I'm gonna set you up and do one panel and show you what it looks like. All right. So, same method as before. If you want, you can even start in and work your way out. And you just sort of pull it off like a rubber mask. All right, so you get the idea. I'm just gonna do the whole thing and we'll come back for the big reveal. All right, so here we go. It's kind of fun that you can look inside and 
see the green on the other side. Love it. Little bit of little bit of chipping here is uh, for me being a little heavy handed, but uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, again, this is kind of a rough and dirty model, not not a, a showpiece by any means. So take your time. Obviously, if you're uh, going to be doing a nicer model, but I love the way that that turned out for really only taking just a couple of hours worth of time total. So that's it. Well, thanks for stopping by the workshop today. I hope you got something out of this and that you can go away from this video empowered to do your own canopy painting, whether it's vacuum formed or something that's just sheet plastic like this. You really can make something truly special and just really make that canopy pop a lot more with clean, crisp lines without a whole lot of effort. Anyway, until next time, keep working on your flying works of art.